someone asked me recently why we bother homesteading. G'day there, I'm Dana from Fantail Valley Homestead and you're joining me on a Saturday morning and I'm going to show you what I'm up to today. First things first, let's pop out and see how this brisket is going. Now to be honest, I've never done this before um, and I'm using a crappy little old barbecue that we have. I'm not sure how it's going to go. In fact, the fact that there's no smoke coming out is not a good number. The meat's cooking slowly. I had to put this other piece of tin foil over the top because my children filled the top of my barbecue up with pieces of clay. And this is just to protect the top of the meat. Well, it's definitely cooking. There's not very much heat coming from it. We might turn it up a wee bit. Uh, poof, that must be open. We'll leave that for a little while and see how we go. I had to move the barbecue around there because I've hung the kids' dough box out and the wind's coming this way. So I didn't want the smoke blowing all over the clothes. Oh there we go, it's smoking again. Hopefully that means it'll get back up to temperature. This this thing honestly I think it was like 60 or 80 dollars, it wasn't expensive and it's got no thermometer or anything so it's very much just guesswork and to be honest I probably should have tightened up the bolts underneath here. Look how loose they are. Oh well. Yesterday while I was in town I bought a few of these, I wanted white ones but they're only black, to go underneath a lot of my pot plants and I found these little metal trivets to keep them up as well because I had all these plants up here and it turns out this particular pot here, the glaze isn't so great on the bottom. And I don't know, oh yeah it's over the back. And I bought myself some new glasses which is nice. Over the back in here, got all my bills that I need to pay. It has left a big old rusty spot on the top of my table. This table used to be, I think it was in a printing press or something, so this is solid steel, this big chunky thing on the top. Unfortunately it's rusted in that in the corner. Friends of ours are demolishing their house and they've offered us a whole lot of their old framing. So Matthew is busy cutting up the framing to be able to be used as firewood. It's untreated wood, it's old heart remu. Unfortunately it's all been smashed. This is remu that our bench top's made of and it's a native wood to New Zealand and it's beautiful. It's a real shame but um, this was old house framing as well that we've used here. We're going to use it as firewood and it'll be perfectly great to burn. And then yesterday I also went and saw one of my friends and she showed me how to grow mushrooms on straw in bags. So you buy the grains covered in mycelium and you put them in these bags with some straw that's been soaked in slaked lime which sterilizes it and then they will just magically grow mushrooms. So once I've done that again I will put together a video for you to show you but this is the bag she gave me. And the other thing she kindly gave me well, there's a whole lot of cuttings which I am about to pot up. Oh, and this is a piece of thornless boysenberry. And these are some cape gooseberries, which she also gave me, which I'm going to pot up as well. So we're going to have a wee chat while I get on and do those. Someone asked me recently why we bother homesteading. And to be honest, it's not easy. And it is a lot of hard work and life is really busy with four kids especially the ages the little two are and trying to run a website slash business as well as fitting in youtube as well as fitting in homeschooling the kids and then on top of that trying to farm and trying to find some sort of semblance of time for myself there's just not enough hours in the day so why on earth do we even do it we started doing it because we had no money and I started a garden because we needed to be able to eat. And that was way back before we had kids. We bought, built a house 
and our mortgage was much higher than what we could realistically afford at the time. And so I thought, oh well, why not? We'll just try and grow some of our food as well. So that kind of started my gardening journey for myself. Previously, when I was younger, I would help mum in the garden and I remember helping my grandparents in the garden as well. But I never really did it for myself until we really needed to. And you can buy a packet of seeds back then. It was about a dollar for a packet of seeds. And then out of that, you could get 30 or 40 dollars worth of food as long as you could keep them alive. Knowing and learning the things that you needed to do to be able to keep plants alive and which ones we actually enjoyed to eat. That was a big thing as well. There's no point in growing food if no one in your family is going to eat it. That was the beginning of my gardening journey and then eventually we got chickens as well. Again, when I was growing up we had about 100 chickens at one point. I was privileged enough to have grown up on a five acre block myself and have grown up with a sort of homesteading lifestyle myself. So it wasn't too dissimilar to what I remember as a kid, but suddenly I was the one responsible for it. And I think I really treasure being brought up that way, actually, and I really treasure the lesson of hard work and the reward, I guess is the word, the reward for putting in the hard work. And also I'm a little animal crazy and so it was really nice to be able to grow up being allowed to have animals because we had the space to do so. So I think I wanted that for my kids. I did. I really did. And because we homeschool them, they're around a lot. To be fair, we're not at home as much as most people seem to think that homeschoolers... Whoop. Sorry, just catch your legs. We aren't at home nearly as much as what people seem to think homeschoolers are. We are often in town with kids' school activities and seeing their friends and different classes that they're involved in and different bits and pieces that we do. Like yesterday, we went and learned how to grow mushrooms. So the kids are learning a lot of those life skills, but how cool is it that like today, Tali is way off down the paddock by herself. She wandered off with, she's got a little ax, she has a pruning saw, she's got some secateurs, and I don't know what else. She's off to make herself a hut. And she's got the walkie-talkie in case anything goes wrong. The kids are really loving having that freedom to be able to roam and we've got the trees down the hill and stuff for them to play in. So really I think we're here for the kids, but not just for the space and not just because it's cheaper to grow a garden, but because of the life lessons that they're going to learn from this and I'm hoping that that lesson of hard work and putting the effort in and us role modeling them that to them as well as expecting them to actually step up and do it themselves as well and it allows them to also have their own little business the kids uh, have mini lot rabbits that they breed and they sell those a couple of times a year as their pocket money I, I ascribe to Joel Sullivan's view on pocket money. I can't afford to pay you just to exist. I can't afford to pay you to be part of the family. My kids do their chores, they do their jobs. That is just expected of them. And if they want more money on the side, they can come to me with a proposal and we can work on that together. So they run the rabbits. They paid with their own pocket money to buy the rabbits. The money that they make from them pays for the food and for the hay and the cages and whatever else. But ultimately I think it's it's good for the soul and it's good for learning and it's definitely nutritionally good. We grow organic food that there's no way I can afford to buy organic food at the store but we can grow it ourselves for the price of a couple of packets of seed. Looks like it's starting to cook up nicely. Did you? Okay. It's definitely got what they call bark. I would be inclined to say burnt, but um, it's looking pretty flash on the inside, so I'm going to wrap it up to help hold the moisture in, I guess. Uh oh. Get the lid on. Oh no. 
Ah, my tin foil's not working. This meat's either going to taste amazing or revolting and I've just wasted a whole big piece of brisket. So I guess time will tell which it is. I will let you know when it's tea time which way we went. <laughs> The outside is really charred and hard, but the inside is really juicy and tender and really yummy.